Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman. Now I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down. It's a Thursday edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down, which means it's time for another theater throwback. If it ain't in the theater, fair game for the Seaman on Thursdays. And today we're hopping in the time machine and taking it all the way back to 2013 um, for a little uh, James Wan movie. That uh, the Seaman, uh, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed, still thoroughly enjoy, and it holds a special little place in my heart because of the night that I went to go see it and what kind of surrounded that. And it's kind of built a rather funny moment that I just live for when I bring it up to my buddy. He's just like, F that noise. Uh, no. Um, and, you know, uh, so it's a good one. Uh, so let's not waste any time, and we got a lot to get into. Uh, so why don't you pull up a chair, take a seat. We're going to dive in spoiler free on The Conjuring. This, of course, the third. Um, horror franchise that kind of James Wan got going, you know, uh, you had Saw and Insidious and then sh very, very shortly after Insidious, The Conjuring hit. And the reason I like The Conjuring so much and, uh, you know, it, it works, I think, a little bit better than the other ones is the way it's deeply rooted in, like, historical fact. Um, you know, Ed and Lorraine Warren, obviously, real life people, plenty of, um, Things that they had captured on camera and documents and their museum of creepy items, uh, you know, that were either possessed or inhabited by spirits. Um, they worked directly with the church. You know, uh, Ed Warren, I think, is the, like, only, like, non-clergyman or part of the, co connected to the main part of the church ever deemed a demonologist. Um, and when you have all that, it just, it, it makes it feel all the more real. And, you know, based on a true story, um, obviously there are tweaks and changes, but you just sit there and it feels like... Uh, it just hits, I don't know, for whatever reason, this movie hits me in a, in a more realistic way than Insidious uh, or, or Saw. And like I said, this one holds a special place in my heart because uh, at the time, the girl I was dating, me and her got into a real bad fight that night and um, or that day. And she didn't want me to come home, so I went to my buddies and I was like, hey, man, you guys like want to go to the movies and, you know, The Conjuring's out looks pretty dope. Got everybody to go. And in the middle of the movie, there's a moment that features the witch um, where you know she's going to pop up somewhere near the wardrobe in that one room. And right as the cut happens, you know, being a pro, uh, you know that little bone you have on your knee? It's like right underneath it. It's kind of on both sides. I grabbed the outside one that was closest to me right as it cut to the witch being up there and like, Freak out time. My man went like five feet in the air. All his popcorn all over the people next to us. Whole theater started laughing. I just, I live, I, I adore that moment so much. It's one of my prouder moments. And I bring it up to him. I actually sent him the clip uh, in a text when that came up in the movie there. And I was like, yo, guess what I'm watching? He was like, F that noise, man. Like, not cool. Um, <laughs> for that, The Conjuring will always hold a special place in my heart. But like I said, it, it's very realistic feeling, man. I, I, I loved um, the way that Juan can weave in and out of a horror film um, and the way he can build the suspense and the tension. And so much of that comes from the camera uh, itself, the way the camera can move. And we, we see, we've seen it in all, almost all of James Wan's movies. Um, you know, most recently, obviously, Aquaman. The way he can transition in and out of scenes in different ways. Um, we saw him get real creative like that with, you know, Aquaman and it's beautiful, right? Like if you dive into the water and then all of a sudden, oh wait, I'm in a fish tank. Or you're following, you know, Jason Momoa's Arthur Curry and Mira as they're running and the camera's going in and out and giving you different stuff. So beautiful and works so well in a movie like that. Throw those types of concepts into something like The Conjuring and he is able to bring the tension and the suspense up so high because the camera is constantly moving and you're seeing things, but you know it's going to move around and then the next time it comes back, something might be there. And then when you expect it to be there, it's not always there. Or he'll let it sit a little longer. And the camera work in this movie, I think, is what makes The Conjuring so good. Um, it really drives the suspense and takes the material and the writing and the acting performances and just elevates it. And it's, it's one of those things that Juan is just so good at doing, specifically in horror, um, where he is just able to take really good material and elevate it to a much higher place. Now, of course, if you're going to do that, you know, you, you need a really, really solid cast. And Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson who is an Aquaman. Um, perfect choices, I thought, to play Ed and Lorraine Warren. Um, you totally, you know, get the connection between the two of them. You understand, like, their kind of, you know, their husband and wife, and, and you feel like their husband and wife in the movie. That connection and that bond between them is very strong. Uh, specifically, 
when things start going wrong. I know some of the other cases that they reference in the movie and things that happen to Lorraine make Ed nervous, but at the same time, especially as we go deeper into the universe, which we will be doing uh, every week for the next five, we're going to go through all of the Conjuring movies. But it's one of those things where The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2, which feature Ed and Lorraine, you know, you're really able to get their their vibe and you understand like why Lorraine freaks out when Ed does, does things or vice versa. Um, so you always feel like there's a lot on the line and in a very quick time, you're able to really understand who these people were, um, what, what they do. You know, you see them in a lecture and we see them obviously getting to work and, you know, being kind of the original ghost hunters. Um, it, it was fascinating to watch that, especially in a time period where we're very familiar with this stuff. And here are people all the way back into the 60s that were doing this stuff and, like, you know, doing it so well that the church would call on them quite often um, to be involved in the investigations that would lead to exorcisms or, or things that actually happen. So you have all that, and then you have Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson who just crush it, and, and boom, you're, you're locked in, and it's the thing that makes the movie go. But the reason, uh, after watching all five movies, um, which of course are just all produced by Juan, only uh, you know the two Conjuring movies directly were directed by him. But the thing you realize in the ups and downs in this series, the family, uh, you know, and a group of kids is really what makes these movies work the best. Uh, the Conjuring, The Conjuring Two, Annabelle, Creation, I think are the three best in this franchise, and all three of them feature either prominently direct families right you have a full family mom dad and like four or five kids in the first one you got a single mom and four or five kids in the second one and then annabelle creation you have a group of like five six uh orphans who are all kind of living under one roof the in insertion of kids just makes anything scary more scary because it, it is you know it's the most terrifying for a kid um, and then when it hits the parents after you see like what it does to the kids and it starts with the kids, that just elevates everything. And the group of kids in this movie specifically, um, were just so, so good. I mean, you got Haley McFarland, um, as Nancy, Joey King as Christine, Mackenzie Foy as Cindy, Kyla Deaver as April. Um, and, and it's just, I don't, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but that, that group, they're, they're just so good. Um, and then when you insert Ron Livingston and Lily Taylor as the parents um, and, and the way that, you know, you're going to try to protect the kids and all that stuff as the witch kind of works on Lily Taylor more, then this thing really starts going. And, and I think the performances in this movie specifically are just fantastic. Uh, Lily Taylor, no stranger to horror movies. Ron Livingston, I just love Ron Livingston when he pops up. He's just so good at that that you know that wheelhouse that he kind of constantly finds himself in. He's so good there, um, and the family dynamic works really, really strongly. So when you insert it into this kind of ghost story, and get into all of the bits about it, and like watching them figure out like what's going on, one of the kids gets goes missing. That tension is just higher when when the, when the kid's life is on the line. You always inch up a little bit further in your chair. And I think that's why specifically this one, The Conjuring 2 and Annabelle Creation, works so well. Because you are prominently focused on kids. Uh, Annabelle and The Nun, not so much in those movies kind of drop off. But you got to start strong. And, and James Wan certainly starts really strong uh, with The Conjuring uh, in that first one. And... Like I said, man, uh, the witch is creepy. Um, the, the way they get into the material and the, the real things that happened versus, you know, some of the other things that we can't, you know, confirm happened. But it all just works, man. And the different set locations, all within a house, right? This all takes place pretty much in one place. Um, occasionally, we go back to Ed and Lorraine Warren's house. Um, and their kid is kind of involved, too, because things sort of come home with them. Um, it just all works so well. But when you're at the Perrin house... Oh, man, I mean, from the basement to, like, when they're just upstairs or the things that are happening to the kids. It's just all creepy and terrifying. And for me, the Conjuring works start to finish. Uh, I think it's my favorite in the entire uh, universe of the Conjuring. Uh, the Conjuring 2, real, real close second. But like I said, I'm always partial to the first ones because those are the ones that get you going and off and running. And, you know, it was very apparent that James Wan was on to something again when he dropped this one and you know i think he was just working at a really really top end of his craft and you get a really great scary movie ghost movie you know possession movie 
all of these things and concepts just kind of worked into then by the time you get to the end and you get to see some of the pictures of the actual people um, and you know you find out the things that actually went on and happened. Oh, it is a terrifying story and just one that I love so much. There you go, man. I can just motor and blab all night long, but I, I'm a real big fan of The Conjuring. Uh, like I said, I think you have a really strong cast um, led by Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson um, and Lily Taylor and Ron Livingston. Throw in a, a cast of kids that, I mean, are adorable, but really pull on your heartstrings and get you up to that maximum suspense level um, by being in the house during all this stuff. And just the way that he plays in the house, man, with doors slamming and the little things where you don't see stuff, right? It's just, you can't see anything, but things are there. That when the actual things finally do manifest, oh man, you jump like it, like it ain't nobody's, but you jump five feet in the air and throw your popcorn all over the next person next to you. Um, so you go, man. Those are all my non-spoiler thoughts on The Conjuring. Huge fan. I can't wait to uh, be talking about The Conjuring Universe every week for the next five. Uh, so next week, you, you know, if you want to watch along with the C-Man, I tweeted this out uh, the other day, but boom, now you got a whole week. Get on The Conjuring 2 and then come on back and we'll break that one down next week. But for The Conjuring, big fan. Uh, so that's it now. I want to know all your thoughts now. If you have seen The Conjuring before, what did you like? What did you not like? Um, what things did you think Juan did the best in that movie? What were the things that you didn't think worked in that movie? If you haven't, somehow haven't seen The Conjuring, I hope the C-Man has turned you on to it, man. If you're a horror fan, you gotta. Anything James Wan does, go go see it, man. Because that dude, is he's a magician. Uh, so good. Uh, but leave all those down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, hop on over. Hit that subscribe button. Come join my Cinema Sit Down Squad and be in on all the fun that we're having. Every Thursday, man, we'll be talking about something that isn't in the theater. Uh, and for the next four after this week, we're going to be talking about Conjuring movies. So hit that alert button so you get alerts every time I make a new video. For the C-Man's Cinema Sit Down Throwback Thursday in the books for the second time. I'm the C-Man, and I'm signing off. Peace. Well, well, if you aren't still here, looking for something else to check out that's C-Man related, why don't you check out a video like this guy or this guy? And if you really want to help the C-Man out in year two, hit that subscribe button and come join the cinema sit-down squad, kids. You know what to do. See ya.